So, uh, hello, hello everybody, good afternoon. Um, we've set this at lunchtime, so if you're eating your lunch in the background, please just carry on. But we would prefer it if you put yourselves on mute so we don't get the sound effects as well. And you're welcome to turn your picture off if you feel more, more comfortable doing that. Um, you've got on your, your, on your screens today, your, but me as the host, Christine Taken, I'm the chair of MDS. And we've got Safi, who's our chief operating officer, and Graham Howe, who many of you probably haven't met before, who is the MD and the owner of the um, Apprenticeship College, who do all of our training for us. Um, so so you, you, th those of you that are close to, M to, to uh, MDS and people who I've had meetings with uh, recently um, will, will, will know that we're actually developing very fast. There's been an enormous amount of growth over the last two years. Um, we've got three new members of staff, um, though actually one of the, somebody is on maternity leave, so that's probably only two additional at the moment. And we've got plans to expand further um, in response to member needs as, as, as we continue growing what we're doing. Our 2020 vision that we wrote uh, four years prior to that was to get to 60 trainees and 50 members. The 50 members is about the number that we need to have the right number of secondments for those trainees. And um, we were also particularly targeting members who could give us uh, secondments all year round because we were finding that particularly with our traditional fresh produce focus that we tended to get huge demand in the summer and then we were struggling to find good secondments for people in the winter. So a lot of the, the new members that we've got um, have, have been able to offer us winter secondments as well, just, just, um, just as easily. And um, we, we, we certainly hit that target of the 60 trainees and the 50 members by the end of 2020. But I should also say that um, what's something we, we realise is that we, we just take it for granted, but it is actually quite unique, is that we have about 95% retention of the uh, of trainees over the two-year graduate training programme. Uh, and uh, so some of that not 100% is actually us managing people out rather than the fact that people are leave. So people very rarely leave. But I think it's generally because we're very supportive, but they also know that if they just hang on in there, there's, a, there's something completely different coming up, which is, uh, I think, how we get that very high retention. <clears throat> over the, the years, when we, when we last did a survey, going right back to the beginning, over 85% of MDS uh, trainees, or alumni now, um, were still in the food industry, which I think is fantastic when you consider that a lot of the people that we're recruiting don't necessarily have food or agricultural backgrounds at all. Um, we're, we're, we're even finding that some trainees going to, you know, some trainees who are recruited by non-member companies then are actually persuading the non-member company to join us. So we've actually had some new members in the last couple of years. It's literally because they've recruited somebody from MDS and think this person's great. You know, we want to be part of this, which is fantastic. Um, and, uh, and, and also the other thing that um, I also didn't realize uh, how special that was, but Graham may, may touch on that when he speaks later, is that every, every single one of our trainees has completed the apprenticeship programme. So we have got a few who are late in putting in their final submission. So, uh, but, but I think we're quite confident that they, they will be getting them in. And uh, that compares extremely favourably to the rest of the industry, where I believe the average is less than 50%. So we're talking about 100% with an industry average of, of less than half. But, um, what, what sort of went ballistic in just prior to October 2020, just the end of that strategic plan that I was just talking about, we saw a massive increase in applications and an increase in secondment requests. And we ended up in October with a cohort of 23, whereas to have the 60 trainees, that meant 15 every time. And the quality of the applications from the, from the trainees was extraordinarily high. And we think that was driven by other businesses cutting back on um, graduate recruitment because of COVID and uncertainty, combined with a recognition that the, the food industry is a, a, a key worker industry and that it's a way that, uh, uh, that, that trainees can contribute. To, uh, I mean, their generation really care about things like the environment and the values of a business. And I think that everything that, that we stand for as an industry, um, it, it, it chimes well with people with those, with those leanings. And um, we think that the increase in secondment requests, which we didn't, we didn't, you know, we, we, we realized we were getting lots of applications from trainees, but we didn't anticipate there would also be a big increase in secondment requests, some of which came from new members. But I think 
with quite a few of our members, the fact that business had grown significantly as business came away from food service into retail. They weren't sure how long it was going to go on for. And do we want to man up permanently or actually do we go through MDS and then we've got somebody for now, but we haven't necessarily committed to employing somebody. As we all know, some of the Eastern Europeans were going elsewhere or going back home. And I think that the combination of these things was, was why we had an increase in secondment requests. But this has actually continued and we had 20 starts in April 2021 and we have just had 27 this October. Bear in mind, I was telling you that actually the winter secondments were normally the hardest to get. We've had 27 requests for trainees. And we've already got 18 trainees ready to start in April, which means that if somebody suddenly has um, a, a, a need now, we can probably get somebody that can start early for them as well. And I believe our current total is 79 trainees and 62 members, which is just incredible. I mean, the growth, the growth in the last four years um, when um, uh, we, we had about just over 30 members and just over 30 trainees, you can see it's, it's a huge difference. Um, but not all of this has been market driven. We've increased our engagement with universities. We've done events such as um, virtual talks on Beanstalk Global. We've worked more closely with career centres and partly actually career, you know, career centres and universities to compensate for the fact that virtual careers fairs don't really work well for us. I think people generally find us at a careers fair and say, oh, what's this? You know, what, what's the food industry? What, what's MDS? What do you do? Whereas on these virtual events, it sort of says, oh, there's MDS, you know, come and talk to them if you want to. And we can sit there in our virtual waiting room and nobody comes to talk to us. So virtual doesn't work so well for us because we're not a well-known, um, you know, well-known business or brand. Um, and we recently we were at the Fresh Produce Fair in Lincoln and actually looking at uh, looking at uh, LinkedIn, it does seem to me as if the team is somewhere different every week and sometimes twice a week. So we're working very hard. Now we're able to get face to face with, 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 with potential trainees. And we've also done a lot more on our social media. The trainees have been fantastic. Most of the social media is actually done by the trainees, but, we, but we've done a lot more. We've got a professional um, public relations company supporting us to make sure that we get more, more coverage in the press um, we, you know, when we've got a good story to tell, not just the sake of it. But both Safi and I have got ambitions to, to expand the programme beyond what we already do. My ambition is to have a cohort of engineers and to put them in engineering apprenticeships for, you know, uh, 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 sorry, engineering secondments so that they're building towards their chartered engineering status. So still doing four different secondments in four different businesses, but all of them with, with an engineering bent to it. Um, because I think as an industry, we have got so much to do to increase production, productivity, and to reduce the environmental impact of what we do, whether I'm talking about growing crops or right the way to how we actually distribute our food. So the growing to logistics is where we need that, that sort of input. And Safi has, you know, not that we're not interested in loads of things, but she has also been for the last three years telling me that she wants to do, she wants to have a part of the programme for people who are looking for a second career, particularly ex-forces people, um, but where somebody's maybe, maybe left school at 16, gone and done something for seven years, and therefore is probably the same age as many of our trainees, but looks to do something different. And that we think that our programme is an ideal way of introducing them to a new industry and, and um, being, being able to get a, a, a career. Um, we've sent a questionnaire to members and thank you very much for those of you who've replied. Um, I have meetings with members on a, well, it's regular from my point of view. You might only hear from me once every one or two years, but I do have regular meetings with members. And I've been discussing the, the, the demand, um, you know, what, what the interest is from them. And we've now got this session where we wanted to tell you a bit more about where we want, what we want to do next and get some guidance from you. Um, we've, we've, we have used the feedback that we've had so far to put in for a grant, a government grant for a flexi apprenticeship scheme. Um, we've put we've put it in for the money. We won't hear till probably the end of December if we've got it. But if we have got it, they need us to hit the ground running very fast, which is another reason why we've got, the, got, got this session here. If we don't get the grant, it doesn't mean that we won't do it, but it means that it'll be much more of an organic, gradual increase as opposed to a massive increase in, in, in what we're doing. Um, 
And one piece of the feedback, whereas we were talking about engineering and, and second careers, is that many people said that they wanted more people coming into logistics and technical roles. To be fair, we haven't fully understood what everybody means by technical. So I think it's quite different. And we'll probably be asking you, know, asking you to explain what do you mean by technical to make sure we're getting the right sort of people in. And that's what we want to hear more, more about today. And again, that could be another dedicated work stream if we wanted to, or it could just be part of part of the, 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 new, the new plan. Um, we've also uh, started measuring member engagement, um, which is for us to try and understand to what extent we feel that our members are engaged with us and, and to what extent it, you know, we are actually serving and, and doing what you want us, want us to do. So that, in, that measures things, you know, we, we've done it numerically so we can get sort of a red, amber, green rating. Um, and on terms of how many secondments you've offered in the last couple of years, have you employed any trainees? Do you use the apprenticeship scheme for your own trainees? And we've also scored, and also whether you use our secondment manager training, you know, the various things that we offer and, you know, is it, is it ticking boxes? Is, is it working for you or not? Um, we've also added to that what the trainees say about members. Um, just really just to find out how we can improve. And also it does feel to me that we, we are always getting new members and I'm hugely excited about that. But we always seem to have a few members dropping off the bottom. And I want to try and catch those members dropping off the bottom. And of course, they're welcome to leave if they if we're not offering what they want. But um, I want to understand that and see if try not to lose members as, as well by making sure that the offer is right for them. But you know, even on that score, only half of our members are what we call fully engaged in terms of really using MDS for everything that, that we can offer. And then we've also got about a third who I would have said are barely engaged at all and they just pay their annual membership fee. And those are the ones I've been targeting in, in ringing and having chats with them. And for a fair number of them, we are delivering what they want. They just don't need us at the moment. Now that's a very nice message to have. That doesn't mean to say that they're 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 on their way their way out. But um, and we don't mind if that if that's what people want to do. But we wanted to have sessions like this to try and understand whether we've got it right and whether this new direction we're going in is what you want us to do. So um, moving back to to the to this particular seminar, I'm going to soon be happening over to Safi. And she's going to be talking about the practical impact of the new direction that we're taken, taking. And Graham is here to talk about all of the different apprenticeships that we may use, because the level five management and um, leadership one might not be the right apprenticeship for somebody that's coming into the food industry, maybe with no graduate training at all, and just, just needing a basic introduction to what we do. So uh, there's a huge range of apprenticeships, and Graham is, is obviously very knowledgeable on that. Um, and, you know, we are here to listen, but felt that we needed to spend a few minutes giving you some background first. Um, so we're, we'll each speak for about 10 minutes and then the, the floor is open to all of you. So if you could store up your questions, um, if, if it's something that needs clarifying as we go along, if you just pop it in the chat box and Kirsty will interrupt us if she feels that we need to explain something there and then. Um, and, uh, you know, whilst you're sort of hot listening to us, just think about if there's any um, any, what, you know, think about what the benefits you see of being a member and maybe anything else that, that we can do. Um, but I think we're very keen to check that this new direction we're going in is going to work and to find who the key people are who we need to work with to hit the ground running. So Safi, I'll hand over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Um, so I'm going to just spend a little bit of time just recapping um, some of the points that Christy made because um, it's an awful lot of information there and I just want to um, really dig down into how we can make this work for members and you know when I think about when I started MDS in 2004 all those years ago like Christy said you know one group today was the whole of the business and so it's come such a long way and our management and leadership program is absolutely um, outstanding and we've got great results and everything's great and that's not going to change so our ambition going forward isn't to take anything away from what we've already got that everybody clearly enjoys and benefits from. It's what else can we do? And I don't think that the what else is necessarily just increasing the size of the groups that we've already got and continually delivering the same program. Um, so discussions with members has highlighted that we've got 
huge skills gaps in certain areas. And those skills gaps are coming predominantly from our understanding from engineering, supply chain, logistics and technical. But we all sit in the office and we say, what does that mean? What, what exactly do our members want? So this is your opportunity while you're listening to the rest of us talk, um, just to make some notes and think, what do I need to know? What do I want to ask? Um, and what do I want MDS to really take on board? Because this is our big opportunity, really, to make sure that we can deliver for you everything that you want from us. I think it's important to remember that MDS is your grad scheme. It's industry wide, but you all you're all shareholders and we work solely to give you what you want so that your businesses can be successful. Um, and so unless we get some feedback, unless you tell us what you want, we won't know exactly what you want us to deliver. So it's quite interesting and a point that's worth noting that quite a few years ago, we had a facts and basis course on MDS. So trainees did two years and then they did a third year in facts and basis. And recently, one of the members has said, you know, we would really love to have a facts and basis course. We train them and um, they, they leave at the end. You know, we put them through the training and they go off and they, they work somewhere else. Um, and that's actually what MDS is designed for. We want to train them. We want to get them to a point where they then go off and work for a company that they've decided they want to make their career. Um, the reason we don't still have facts and basis is because we didn't get enough opportunities in secondments for the trainees to get their field experience. So the thing to take on board when we think about what is it that we want members, what do members want from MDS? What can I give to ensure that it's successful? We have to work together. So we will put on the training, we'll recruit the people, we'll support them, we'll get them to reach their full potential, but members have to be committed to offering secondments that will give them the experience to make them successful. So we need to work together. And I think we need much more of this collaboration. We need much more discussion and we need um, to make sure that we really understand what we can get from this programme and how we can make it much better. Um, this has all come at a really interesting time because like Christine said, the government have initiated um, the Flexi Apprenticeship and we've applied for funding, which we're hoping um, we will be successful. I'm always sort of glass half full sort of person, so haven't even considered we won't be successful yet. Um, and for those that don't know, a Flexi Apprenticeship basically is what MDS is. It's the opportunity for um, members, well, let's, I, I still talk in members and trainees, but we'll, we'll Think about that as businesses and apprentices. Um, so members have don't want to employ somebody for two years, but they want somebody to come in and do some work. They don't want to take the apprentice on and have a commitment to a whole contract. So they have an apprentice training agency, which is MDS, employ them, then second them to a variety of companies throughout their apprenticeship contract. And on, in the background, they will be doing the training. At the end of the time they've completed a various amount of secondments they will finish the apprenticeship they'll be ready for a full-time job and they will stop working for the apprenticeship agency and work for an employer that's exactly what mds is so this isn't news to us this is really quite straightforward um, but the opportunity is that we can now have these second arms of our business so we've got the leadership and management program we can now have all the um, additional um sectors that we want to fill. So if we have an engineering sector, the trainees in that will go off and do engineering secondments. They won't go and do the variety of secondments that the other trainees would be doing on the management programme. And the training that they do with for their apprenticeship would be more geared towards um, engineering. Unless, of course, they've got an engineering degree. So why would we put them on an engineering apprenticeship? They might then want to do the management to get those skills, but have their secondments directed into an engineering at degree level um, ability. So we, we, we can be flexible, we can meet everybody's needs. That's the trainees, identify the careers they want and really focus on it. The members fill the skills gaps and for MDS, we can expand and make ourselves much more, um, a lot more variety than we've, we've had historically. And to do that, we're going to target not just graduates, we're going to look at people, like Christine said, from second careers. I'm really passionate about X-Forces, but there's 
I strongly believe who knows what they want to do when they're 18. You make all these decisions, you get pushed into a route, um, you find yourself on a career path that you can't always get off. Well, this is a fantastic opportunity for somebody with potential, with skills, but not necessarily with food experience, but to get them in, transfer their skills and get them into the industry. Um, we also want to target people that high potential that didn't choose to go to university. They're still high potential people. Let's get them. We're missing them people at the moment. So we've got a whole pool that we want to target and we want to make successful and bring them into the industry. And the, the last point I think is, um, you know, why have we got these skills gaps in the first place? And I think um, unfairly, the food industry has had lots of um, negative press. You know, I've, I heard when the pandemic started, you know, all the unemployed people should go off into the fields and pick cabbages. So, you know, why should be on benefits? Why have we got unemployed people and there's jobs? It makes it sound really negative. The message is there, you know, there's, there's work. We want you to come and work for us. But it's almost like a punishment. You know, you, you're, you're right at the bottom and this is all you're, you're worthy of. MDS is all about developing people. It's about training them, making them realise potential, really giving them their self-worth, adding value. And we want to bring that into your business so that the industry as a whole is accepted as somewhere where actually it's not, um, you know, work all the hours under the sun for low pay. Actually, this is an industry where you can make a career, where you're valued and where you'll be um, given all the prospects that you would want. It's not, you're not going to be stuck doing something that you don't want to do forever. And I think I truly believe that MDS can help that to happen. I'm going to pass you over now to Graham, who's going to talk to you about the standards that we can offer, because when we do the training, what, what we're really proud of in MDS is that we make it industry specific, and we want to make sure that whatever standards we develop for this programme, that it is for our industry. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Safi. Um, I think as uh, Safi's already touched on, a flexible apprenticeship is actually what MDS already delivers. Um, but it was announced as, a, in essence, a new scheme under the budget this year, under the plan for growth um, overarching um, agenda around kickstart, restart. Flexible apprenticeships was also on that agenda. What they saw is that for some um, businesses, for some sectors, permanent employment of apprenticeship is a barrier. The example they often use is a construction apprentice throughout its two-year apprenticeship might work on three or four different building sites or building schemes. But obviously that's what, all, that's what MDS already does offer. So what does it mean for MDS members? As Christine and Safi have already identified, it's an opportunity for you to consider expanding into different um, sectors, different parts of your business where you think apprenticeships and new talent would benefit. I think one thing that is very clear to me, being the training provider for, for MDS, is that MDS do a huge amount of work to challenge us to make sure the apprenticeship we deliver is what MDS members want. I mean, we work with, with, with a number of large employers, PLCs, et cetera, that do nowhere near the challenge that I would get from Safi and Greta to make sure that the programme is fit for purpose. So the benefit for you as members, whether you um, have a trainee through the MDS scheme or choose to train some of your current staff directly with us, your programme's being developed to meet your exact requirements. The apprenticeship standards are, are have been developed by employers, but in this instance, MDS challenged us, we put in significant additional workshops and skills to meet what they understand is what you want. Um, and, 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 you know, I think that's, that is something that, that, that would prove very beneficial if we moved into other areas. Um, as Christine touched on, the, the national average for people to achieve their apprenticeship standard after starting is less than 50%. We would expect in trainees it's going to be close to 100%. And, we, and what we're seeing in terms of members use, putting their own staff on would probably be around 70%. Okay, it's not at the 100% that we've got for trainees, but again, significantly above national averages. And I think that's because we're proud of the product we, de we develop, but MDS have ensured it, it's fit for purpose. Can I look at the next slide, please, Kirsten? What I wanted to do was try and 
demonstrate some of the areas that you could consider. Now, these apprenticeship standards wouldn't necessarily all be delivered by the apprenticeship college, depending on what you're looking at and the work that you're currently going to do with MDS. There may be areas that need a specialist training provider, which is not what we do, in particular around some of the engineering and technical um, apprenticeship standards. Where they're green, in essence, we can deliver them today. We would need to go through those with MDS and input from members to ensure they're fit for purpose for your, for your sector. But if we looked at them in turn, we've got supply chain and we, you know, there is a, a developing demand from our customers to look at upskilling people that are in charge of supply chain, whether they work in a supply chain business or whether they are managing or supervising a supply chain not least because they're under pressure in terms of, of very competitive recruitment and job markets against you know, the larger players in this market, be that Amazon, et cetera. So the level three supply chain leader stroke practitioner is aimed to give someone all the skills necessary to play their part in supervising a supply chain. And they would do a project that looks at how they, do, how they might recommend a specific part of a business supply chain can be more efficient. Um, and it's, you know, that it's very much like a, a, a combination of team leading, business improvement, and all those efficiency things around project management in supply chain. There's a new standard around being a supervisor in a transport and warehouse situation. We don't currently deliver that, but that's something that could be developed relatively quickly. In terms of leadership, we already obviously deliver the level five operations or departmental manager for um, MDS members and MDS trainees, but there are other apprenticeship standards that could be um, considered, be that the level three um, team leader supervisors are coming in at, at maybe a slightly different level. You know, it could be, as, as, as Safi explained, someone who may have dropped out at A-level um, time or first year of degree and want to actually get into employment so therefore they might start at a, a level three role and they would progress hopefully to doing a level five either either as a trainee or as, as a direct employee other things around there's a level four um, project management apprenticeship or a level five coaching professional um, that can be considered again for trainees or, or members as, as Safi said, technical is an interesting area. What does technical mean? So I've, I've identified um, two apprenticeship standards which are currently read in a sense they're more aimed at the food and drink sector and they're engineering led. And it could be looking at a level three, again, for people who may have dropped out at um, uh, A-level or university or wanting to retrain or return to work. They could have been away from work for, for a period of time or you've got the level five food and drink engineer where there could have been a graduate, but not an engineer graduate, um, and maybe considering you know, how they might work in the food and drink sector and looking for a long-term career in that. In between that, we do offer two apprenticeship standards, which are about business improvement at level three and four. So that tends to be aimed at people that are already have got knowledge of the sector and looking at how they can understand um, business improvement with our Six Sigma, Kai's and etc. as part of their role. Again, very project delivered as an apprenticeship. What I wanted to add was obviously, in essence, what does that mean sometimes if you're not from the education sector, what does it mean for you as a business? A level three apprenticeship is an equivalent of an A-level. So that's the kind of level you're looking to recruit people into. Um, level four and level five are HNC uh, or entry to university and level five, which is obviously the program we currently do, is the equivalent to a foundation degree or a higher national diploma. And just for relevance, if you went to level six, it would be a degree, not that at this point we are recommending level six, but there could be a level six program that is relevant, which obviously um, I would support MDS to find the appropriate university, university to deliver that. Um, that's a snapshot of of areas that we've looked at based on the survey results that came into MDS, but clearly part of this discussion, which obviously hand back to Christine is, you know, are there other areas that we're not aware of that um, should be considered in terms of the expansion of, of MDS and its, and its training schemes? Thank you. Thank you very much, Graham. Yeah. Right. Uh, 
so now now we're really over to you to sort of start the discussion give us a sort of you know just top line feedback on what you've heard from us and uh, so if you can either put your hands up or, um, or or pop something in the chat if you if you don't want to speak um, we'd be very pleased to hear from you so um fire ahead with some questions if anybody's got anything and um, in in the meantime while I'm waiting for you um Safi just just run through the timelines of this bid when, when did we put in for it what's the total amount that's available i'm not sure whether you're prepared to share how much we've actually asked for but you know what's the timing in terms of when we hear and when we'll have to start well we we put in for it i think it was the end of august um we're expecting to have the results um at the end of december um graham tells me that sometimes that can be extended so we we're waiting to hear the government have put, I believe, seven million um, into the pot um, for a, a variety of people to put in their bids, and we've asked for just under five hundred thousand. So um, that would allow us to build a workforce, so the team that we need to run it at the moment, um, with the current trainee members, we are at full capacity. We wouldn't, with our current structure, be able to take on any additional. So this would allow us to recruit an additional team to to fund their salaries while the um, programme was established for two years and then recruit all the additional trainees we want. We've said that we're going to recruit 100 trainees in 18 months to do these extra roles. So we're pretty much duplicating what we've got, but offering different programmes. I, I don't think either you or I have mentioned that actually it was Graham that drew our, drew our attention to the grant and was very helpful in putting the whole paper together. So uh, he was. Thank, you very, thank you very extremely much. Extremely helpful. I can honestly say I could not have put that together without his help. Yeah. And, and they're very tedious, these forms, aren't they? Because you sometimes have to keep saying the same thing six times over because each box gets marked by somebody else independently. And it's having somebody with the knowledge that you have to repeat yourself all the time really, yeah. really really helps so thank you we didn't actually also say that when we were first getting into apprenticeships I know it might sound like we're really knowledgeable but when they were first came out it was so difficult to find out anything about them and we got we got ourselves registered as an apprenticeship training agency I think there's only there's less than 100 in the UK we got ourselves registered and then we said right now how do we access the money and they said there's no money for you at all <laughs> we've done completely the wrong thing but anyway now it's obviously useful for us at a later stage to say well we actually are already an apprenticeship agency apprenticeship training agency when it comes to saying well we'd like to do this and it's, it's quite interesting that that this whole flexi apprenticeship thing almost identically mirrors what we already do at mds which is which is great to actually think that you know other industries can start to benefit from the, the structure that we have um but we obviously can't just ask to to fund what we're already doing which is why it was an ideal thing to use it for the new new directions we were talking about now i still can't see anybody having put their hand up um is anybody prepared just to give me a top line feel of what they say anna thank you You're, thank you um, sorry i was just wondering is it um the intention to have differing levels then and a different payment level so you can select which type of candidate you would like in the business yeah, that's we're we'll, too far ahead maybe no we we really are um thinking on those levels so we are thinking like for example engineers um they if we want to attract engineers and get them to work in our industry we're going to have to pay them a higher salary than we currently pay mds trainees so we're budgeting that we are going to pay them more and the daily rate for an engineer um, that comes with experience will obviously be a bit higher. If they're at the lower levels, then we are going to have our minimum salary because we're expecting these people to move around. You know, they'll, they'll still move nationally. So we'll keep them at the lower salary and the pay grades will stay the same, but the, the experiences that they have will be slightly different, but they will all be doing different training programs. We don't want lots of, you know, one, one trainee's doing one program, another one's doing, we do want cohorts of trainees doing the same program because then they will form a group they'll have bonding the one of the reasons mds succeeds is because of the groups that they form and the support they give each other so if, if we had less than 10 in a group i don't think they would get the same experience um, and i think what we really want to do is mirror the experience just with different standards and different um you know specific sectors 
I think that's partly the, the feedback that we're hoping to get from you is to say, well, of the sorts of people you're talking about, I'm most interested in getting people that will probably be, you know, will end up being a, a production line supervisor. That will be their final, that, that's what we want to employ them as. And it'd be very useful if they had this sort of level three apprenticeship. And if there's quite a few of you saying you want to do that, that's enough for us to build a cohort. So there's no way we're going to be a cherry picking from that, that chart that Graham showed you. What that shows you is what we could do. And we want to understand which are the one or two things that we should be starting off by doing. And we can expand further if the demand is there, but we, we do need to put little, little cohorts together. So um, um, Alexander, uh, is it Berger or Berger? Anyway, you're, you're next, please. It's Berger. Thank you, Christine. Um, so uh, thank you to both you and Safi for, for the update. It's really interesting to see that you're planning to diversify things. And I think that's a, a really welcome thing for us. With my Aldi supply chain head on, um, obviously, I think the, the opportunity to have supply chain specialists is a, is a real plus. I think it's something that we would be keen to, um, to support as well, because... You, I'm, I'm not sure. I think Safi's certainly aware that we have two rounds of intake, if you like. We have supply chain NDS uh, um, placements, but we also have national buying placements. There will always be that national buying focus. But I think in the last few years, to probably two to three years, we've had some su significant success with uh, with bringing MDS people into the supply chain department. If we if they were supported with uh, a qualification to back that up and like an industry-wide qualification that would be really beneficial for them I think whether they land with Aldi long term or not because it's about the individual's development rather than Aldi getting something out of it I think clearly there is there is immediate benefit to Aldi but if if they're going to be supply chain specialists I think that's a, that's a benefit to the industry we know how much pressure supply chain is under right now so I think that's a really positive step and certainly something that Aldi will support without question. Very helpful. Thank you. Can I just say sorry? Thank, thank you, Alex. I really appreciate that because um, one of the points that you made there was that it's not just about what Audi can get out of it. It's Audi will, without doubt, benefit, and so will any company because if if we recruit somebody that wants to do supply chain and we give them the experience, what you don't want is to employ somebody and then they leave. That's that's the problem that we hear all the time. When they do MDS, they'll find not just the sector they want to work in, they'll find the company culture. So you will definitely benefit because when you take someone on full time, they will already know from their experiences that that's where they want to work. Um, so that's that's a really useful comment. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. James. Uh, thank you. Yeah, um, James from uh, Fleur and Nurse. Great to hear that you're an advocate of getting exam forces people into the industry. I'm exam forces myself. Um, and I know they've got a lot to, to offer. Um, and it just depends what um, what level you're looking to get them in at. So if you get people who've been on any kind of junior leadership courses in the F across the tri services, will normally come with um, an IML qualification. So depending as you go up the kind of military train, you, you will go and you can you can either make that an IML or you can go to CMI. So depending if you get to a staff sergeant, colour sergeant, or flight sergeant, warrant officer, you'll be at a level seven, and then they'll work their way back down um, to say if you're a corporal. You, you will have a level four uh, IML. Um, so that's really good. And, and also in logistics and military, there's, there's lots of transferable skills there. So we have all kind of departments that are doing that. And if you can have a moving bullets or any kind of military equipment around the earth, you can be moving food produce. So I think there's a lots, lots of great, um, great work to be done there. And um, one, one thing I really enjoyed working with the MDS students, and this is not one thing I think not just MDS students are lacking, but a lot of young people is the kind of art of re resilience and the high achievers have always done extremely well, the high flies academically and gone to university and done well, um, but works very different. Um, so when the pressure's on at work, it's okay to, to fail. And I believe it's very hard to get those skills from um, a, an academic qualification. So I'm interested to hear if, you, if you're going to do any more bolt-on courses, so adventure training, putting the, uh, the your trainees out out of the comfort zones, maybe that be, I don't know, caving, mountaineering, out, out on a ship, and to kind of, in a controlled environment, up that at pressure and to see to see how they react. I think that's really important. I just wonder if you've got plans for, for that. 
Yeah. Well, certainly we we always did do the adventure training and it, and it was really enjoyed by the trainees. We used to send them off to the Lake District for five days and do a variety of leadership mm -hmm. tasks. Um, I took that away when we did the apprenticeship because um, it, it didn't fit in with the programme. But I think you're right that it we are lacking something else. So I don't think we would send them off for a week like we used mm. to do. But certainly we can consider bringing something in at induction stage. Resilience, without a doubt, is something that we are tackling because it's, it's you know, I don't, well, how can I say it positively? We, we need them to know that, you know, when you have a bad day, it isn't you don't have a mental health problem um and and we've got to really work on that and i think sometimes the negative um well some the way that the media put it you know everything's being highlighted people are getting confused and it's sometimes you've just got to dig in and our trainees we are drumming that into them that you know this this is something that you've got to do if you want to be a leader you can't just give up when it gets tough um, it, it's not always appropriate to go for a walk and, and make yourself feel better. You have to do that a bit later. This meet the trainees that we're doing in January. We've got a um, speaker coming to do something on resilience. It was a female that walked to the North Pole with her mother, the first, the first woman to do it, I think she was. Um, and she's got some fantastic stories to tell. And included in that is going to be workshops on resilience. But what I'd like to do, yeah, without a doubt, is send them off into the wilds and really test their ability but we might need to do that over a one or two day exercise rather than a week thank you and i'll say james when i i used to run the co-op farms i used to wonder whether actually everybody would have been better off having a degree in logistics rather than agriculture because mm -hmm. you'd end up with the most senior person in the business rushing around with a fuel barrel just mm -hmm. trying to keep the combines moving and you just thought yeah. this is you know this is actually something that is highly mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's not about growing crops. It's about managing your workforce, getting on yeah. use of your machinery, yeah. making the best use of the, the, the weather yeah. and things. But anyway, thank you. Did you want to say something else? You've left your hand up. Oh, no, no sorry. No, it took me a while to figure out how to get it up. So I'll have to try and figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK, I will, I will assume it's down and wave at me if it goes up again. Um, and, and just to say th thank you very much. And, and if you don't, but we, one of the things that we have had, talked about if we actually get this bid that we actually want to start working more with some of our members and you sound like an ideal person to to maybe ask on to our we Safi's called us a dream team but you might <laughs> on the dream team to help us with working with it with getting into the x-forces anyway Justin put your hand up yeah hi everyone um so yes I think I would totally agree with some of the comments that um that everyone said so far and certainly obviously I've I've pick this one up separately with um, Greta and Safi um, just around different levels supply chain um, uh, and I think everything that's going on at the moment has really highlighted that and it's it's trying to use this as a forum to actually externally um, portray a, a better image of this industry and logistics, warehousing, all of those sorts of things as a as, as a positive thing and a and an actual career choice rather than it, it's it, it's something to fall back on. Um, and actually, with with putting some of this this structure around it, we can um, we can actually start to build a program over. The, well, I was going to say over time, but looking at some of your timelines, are gonna, it's going to need to be a quick time um, to be able to actually do this. And I, I think all of us whatever the industry that we're in I, I think there's a lot of synergy that we can work with between ourselves um whether it's at the the front end or the back end of the supply chain whether we're customer facing or not um i think actually putting it all together we can actually offer people the same as we do with with mds at the moment all sorts of varied placements but still on a theme um and using the example of if it is supply chain and logistics whether it's it, it's it's our end and the agricultural end of of logistics or whether it's um you know aldi and, and that end of, of retail there's a lot that happens in between but pretty much all of it involves a truck and a warehouse um mm -hmm. so um so yeah no really um really keen to support and obviously um help and push on where we can Thank you. And you, you may have picked up from what Safi was saying that we weren't actually going to say the engineering course was the engineering stream was only available to people who've done engineering. It can be somebody that actually thinks that would be an interesting area to, to move into and will help them help them through that. But thank you. Thank, thanks very much for your support. Thank you. Um, Andy. 
Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks. Thanks for the update. Uh, I sort of at risk of repeating actually um, what was just been said. I, can, I basically completely agree with that around supply chain. I think um, if you can find anyone that wants to come and join work in supply chain this year, then uh, please do and send them our way. So uh, obviously it's massively challenging at the moment. I think, you know, yeah, I agree with um, what Justin just said about it. it's kind of really highlighted the need for real uh, talent in that area. Um, the kind of, I think, global and and sort of national and local supply chain issues this this year have been you know, well publicized and extremely challenging so i, I definitely support um that kind of skills development um and i think actually for us that goes all the way through from you know he's talked about the sort of level three logistics warehouse operative um or team leader type level all the way through to you know senior senior leadership senior management in um in supply chain so yeah that, that would be really good i think that um, I guess, yeah, sort of linked on to that. I think the the other thing that I think is attractive about that angle is that I think it kind of gets the right balance between um, being too specific and too generic, which is, I think, what MDS is actually very good at, is kind of treading that balance between not doing things which are actually you know, too narrow and therefore only, only relevant to a small subset of members, um, but also not being too generic that actually... You know, there's no kind of benefit over just going out and getting anyone off the off the street kind of thing. So I think I think supply chain has, and again, as Justin just said as well, there's there's lots of sort of transferable skills or transferable needs, I guess, across members, um, which I think yeah, MDS is very good at kind of filling that filling that kind of gap. Um, and again, and my kind of last point I think is that one of the one of the great things about the um, the kind of apprenticeship training when it's done through through MDS, I think is 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 the is the sort of value of the cohort, and kind of knowing that there's going to be a, a good relevant cohort that, that those people are joining and to go through that the kind of the more formal training elements of the um, apprenticeship, I think is really valuable, and I think in some ways that that actually has, I think, put us off putting our um, employees through in, into kind of. I guess other apprenticeship courses because it's hard to know who else is going to be on the course <laughs> and I know sometimes that, that probably shouldn't matter but actually it's you know if they join it if they join a cohort and everyone else is you know um, public sector or uh, we've had that before and it's it's very difficult for them to kind of connect and get value out of the discussions and things in the training whereas you know putting someone into a, you know something that's been kind of organized by through MDS we know that actually they're going to have real value in those conversations um, so yeah, I think, I guess overall, yeah, that, that all sounds very positive <laughs> from my perspective. And I suppose I should maybe ask you, if, if I should maybe ask in each of you, but Andy, so would, would you have engineering type positions or do you think you just have supply chain ones? Which, which, which sorts of comments do you think you might be able to offer? Um, yeah, definitely supply chain. Um, engineering, I find um, a bit difficult to say, I guess. It's kind of... Probably we don't, but again, it depends a bit, like you said, with technical, it depends exactly what we're sort of talking about there. In that. Well, I, I'm not sure. I mean, certainly, I, I, I'm an engineer and I, and I had to put in a submission to the uh, Chartered Institute of Mechanical Engineers, you know, to get chartered. And I think it's just sort of trying to, to have something. I mean, I, I would have said actually anything to do with supply chain. If you'd done us a comment in that, you would be able to write that up. From an you know as an engineering piece of experience, so maybe we need to be careful not to make everybody think if it doesn't involve a spanner, it's not engineering. You know, it, it, could, it could be a layout. It could it, it could be yeah trying to find a logistic solution to something. I guess the I mean yeah I agree with that the the area that um, that I do think is potentially interesting maybe a bit too specific at the moment, but um, down that kind of technical slash engineering route is is more around. Um, I guess things like robotics, automation, um, and then even going into kind of um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and kind of data and things like that. I think there, there is a real that could be really interesting, um, and we would certainly be interested in that. But, but that's it's kind of on the on the edge, I guess, between um, engineering and te and technology and technical. Thank you. Um, we might, I might come back to that in a minute with, with, with everybody, um, but I'll, I'll just take all of the questions or comments first. Um, Lisa. Hi. Um, yeah, we, supply chain and engineering, we would take trainees from, I think these would be hugely valuable for our business. 
And if you wanted to explore technical, that would be amazing because we are really struggling to find good technical talent in the market just now. Um, but I wanted to ask specifically, I know, you know, a lot of the training you do just now around leadership and things you also put out to your members to send employees on. Do you think that's something you'll explore when you start to look at um, supply chains and um, programs and engineering, for example? Yeah, the programmes will definitely be open to members and staff as well, exactly the same way as we do with the um, management programme. Good. To be honest, we might really need you because if we've got, you know, if we've only managed to find four people to actually have one four from our members builds a cohort and actually gets them all supporting each other. So you, that actually might be incredibly useful right from the beginning to have members that want people to do the same apprenticeship that we choose. So I, I suspect, you know, I, I'm beginning to think that we maybe need to have a sort of a survey sent around to members and say, if we offer this apprenticeship, how many people might you be able to? Yeah. And that will really start to build our picture of where to put our focus. We may find that we've actually got enough members to start doing one straight away, in which case we can do that, because uh, it is about offering you things that, that, that are helpful to you. Good. Um, Rachel. Hi. Um, so I think loads of kind of really interesting points. And I think what I would say from a Branston point of view is that from an so engineering and supply chain, I think both areas are, are, are kind of um, kind of sectors of the business that we would be able to kind of offer offer secondments for. Um, in terms of engineering, we we're a bit traditional. We're very much, you know, we we have an apprenticeship scheme already. We recruit apprentices into the business. Um, as engineers and you know they might be 18 year old people you know kids leaving leaving school they go straight on to a Lincoln College apprenticeship with us and within well after four years and when they've um, completed their apprenticeship they're on full engineer salary which is at the moment starting at 40k so you know by the time they hit 23 they're potentially at the top end of their kind of earning potential as a maintenance engineer with a food industry business now very aware that there's alternative engineering roles and um re, you know responsibilities and you can move into management and team leading and all that kind of stuff but the standards that we offer at the moment are level two and then on to level three um yes. and i would be potentially be slightly concerned that if we were to then mix groups of internal apprentices with um secondments for mds doing the same job that they would one potentially be doing different qualifications and it and it might just cause a little bit of kind of internal competition in the sense of you know I know more than you you know more than me um I'd rather be doing that you know I'd rather be doing that scheme or so I, I suppose from a business or a member point of view we'd have to decide whether we fully commit to supporting the MDS engineering program and actually run our apprenticeship scheme scheme alongside yours or we would have to understand how we manage that that kind of mix, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but engineering is, in, is, is absolutely where we need to kind of be building talent pipelines and stuff. And, you know, as a member who has benefited from, um, you know, uh, uh, recruiting permanently ex-MDS, um, you know, at the end of their scheme or, or, or after that, then, you know, we, we see the value. I think, you know, we're now, what, three and a half, four years in, and we're now really seeing that value because, um, you know, we've got a number of members in the business now permanently. We've, you know, we, we do regularly offer secondments and we hope we, we try and kind of mix that up as well. Um, so I think it's, I, I absolutely think it's the right direction. Um, you know, those two two key kind of key areas. I support the, um, I can't remember what the lady's name was, um, in terms of the technical side as well, I think there's a, a bit of a, um, a plug on on kind of technical management talent coming through pipelines now um, that we're that we're starting to see. Um, on the supply chain side, I think yeah, we could probably you know offer secondments um, for that, but you know don't have as much um, kind of feedback on on how that might work with us in terms of what we already do. Um, but I think, yeah, absolutely kind of on the right lines. And it, it would just be about how members work, what they're currently doing with um, with the, the new standards that you might be offering um, as part of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, and thank you very much for saying so, uh, because that's very helpful. We, we might even, you know, not expect you to be part of the engineering. Obviously, we wouldn't stop you, but we wouldn't plan for you to be part of it. But actually, we could maybe learn quite a lot by talking to you about how you've succeeded and what their issues were and what, what you know, what, it, what you thought the various apprenticeship schemes are, are like, you know, the ones that they're studying. So I might try and learn from you as well for the benefit of everybody in the membership and at, at some point I mean quite a few people have their own graduate training programs as well as NDS running in running in parallel and we have had the same issue by other members about well we pay our trainees quite a lot more than you than you pay yours and that caused cause us yes, we said well they applied to join us they knew what the was going to be and they're on a program um, you know they, they may well feel resentful but that's not yeah. Wasn't, they went, didn't get offered a job by you in the first place. But that's not, not necessarily a good cop-out, but just to say um, it, we do experience that already elsewhere. Mm. And, uh, but we don't mind. You know, don't, don't worry, you don't have to support what we're doing. So I've, I've just, just in case you want to change, and, but I'd love to try and learn from you. Yeah, but I think, I think we would. That's the thing, because we don't always get as many apprentices as we would want. We don't always keep all of them, um, you know, in terms of they don't always meet the standard that we would be expecting. Um, so yeah, I think we would absolutely want to want to kind of take advantage, but it's again, it's just how we how it would work alongside. I mean, um, I, I, I deliberately spoke about the very high retention rate that we have because I think that many people feel that they are training people and then they're leaving them when they've actually got qualified. And yeah. we can take people, get them all the training, get the experience, well, and then when they go and work for somebody, we know they're going to stay there at least two to three years because they've chosen that and they know what they're walking into as opposed to decide afterwards, well, that wasn't really quite what I wanted to do, but now I'm qualified, I'll go elsewhere. Mm. I mean, you know, not to say that, you know, we wouldn't have the ad hoc kind of um, project engineer type role. So it would be, you know, assisting or supporting a project manager. And, you know, that's, again, from a food industry point of view, that's always a, a bit of a want and need when people are, uh, you know, investing heavily on sites or, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I do think, um, yeah, we definitely have a need and, a, and, a, and an interest in, in a, in a engineering scheme absolutely and um, because I think that's where we're really start starting to see a talent kind of wall I suppose that we're starting to hit yes um Graham would you like to comment on what you've been listening to yeah yeah I'll just um uh, a quick observation that obviously if it's not clear what potential we're moving towards is more of a kind of career ladder approach that members may take a level three supply chain trainee um, into their business. Um, that trainee may obviously become permanently employed by a member and a year or two later may then rejoin the level five management if they progress from being successful in supply chain to be a supply chain manager because they've been given supply chain technical skills, but then later down the line that might need the managerial skills. Um, and that's one of the things that may come from this expansion in, in that people may, you know, in essence, progress to do multiple courses. And I think that the beauty of that linking to another question around trainees and their own staff is, you know, we, we are creating the apprenticeships for the MDS and the sector. So getting people together in the same sector, learning the same skills, be that at level three or at level five. Thank you. It doesn't look like we've got any more questions, and I'm not going to hold you all here. I think that what you've indicated to me is the sort of questions that we need to ask of the wider membership. And um, I'm aware that quite a few people replied to this uh, to the request for this meeting to say, please send me a recording. So those of you that are listening to this as a recording, please get back to to Safi with uh, any, any comments. But I think I think we, can, we Safi, I don't know if you agree that we should maybe sort of draw up a, a question, you know, sort of a, a questionnaire and just pull out a few of those and find establish which are the which are the course, the apprenticeships that people might be put, have people to put on and which they might be able to offer secondments that would match them. Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think we'll, we'll, we'll do that quite quickly, because I think, like I said in the beginning, it's really important that we find out from members what they want and for us not just to assume what we think they, they need. Um, and we can only do that if we get feedback. So we welcome all the feedback. If you go away after this um, meeting today and think, oh, I, I wish I'd said that or there was a point that I want to put forward, please 
send me an email um, and we can discuss it further. And Rachel, I'll go away and think about the points you've just made because I'm already thinking, well, I'm sure that we can work together on this and I can help to make that um, better. And the, some of your um, anxieties over, you know, trainees, and we have that quite a lot already with the management program. So thinking about ways how that's worked, maybe there's something we can do with the engineering as well. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to be involved. Well, thank you, thank you all very, very much. Um, just do, I just do a final just check that neither neither Safi nor Graham want to add anything before I wind up. No. Thank, thank you all very much for coming along today. Um, I, hope, I hope it's been sort of a useful way of getting a quick overview. Um, obviously, we'll be bitterly disappointed if we don't get the grant, but we'll still try and do something in this area. It'll just be a little bit slower and more organic than, um, than if we do get the grant, in which case we're just going to literally go and recruit people straight away to get this all moving. So thank you all very much. It's exciting times. And uh, best of luck. And if I don't speak to some of you before, before Christmas, um, have, 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 see you next year and have a good Christmas. Thank you, you too. Bye. Thanks a lot, Christine. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. See you, Safi. Bye. Bye.